What's going on? Welcome to this IAG air oil separator installation video. I just got done installing it in my 2020 STI and I set out to record the only video that you should need to get this installation done. You can probably do the installation over the course of a day with tools you probably already have at home. But in the video description, I will list all of the tools that you need for this installation and some other tools that are very nice to have. Now I wanna point out this is strictly a step-by-step -step tutorial. I recorded a separate overview of the IAG air oil separator. I unboxed it, showed you why we need it in this car, went over blow by and what every host is doing. I'll link to that video up above and in the video description. But this video is an installation tutorial and we're gonna get right to it because it's a long video, but I do wanna say that if you're interested in this installation, that I recommend that you watch the entire video before you take this installation on because it's a long installation, it's nuanced. That way you'll have a very good idea if this is something that you wanna take on or that you can handle and if you have everything that you need before you do it. So without wasting any more time, let's get right to it. Since we'll be working with electrical connectors, we have to remove the negative battery terminal. So we're gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench to do it and move that cable aside. On 2017 plus STIs, you'll find the electrical connectors of two crankcase ventilation sensors. And we have to unplug them. They're easy to spot because they have blue tape around them. So start on the passenger side and unplug the connector there. We'll get back to it shortly. But while we're on this side, we're also gonna unplug the sensor near the front of the engine. Now we'll get to the driver's side and unplug that second electrical connector and move it aside for now. Now grab a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet wrench and remove the two bolts holding these hard breather lines in place. I like to put the bolts back in their place so that I can easily keep track of them. Now we can go ahead and tilt the breather lines and unplug the driver's side connector more easily. Grab the hard breather lines and put them aside for now. Right in front of the intercooler, you'll find a blow up valve and it can easily be removed with a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet wrench. Once off, you can put the bolts back for safekeeping and to hold the gasket in place. Then we're gonna take the brake booster hose and unclip it from the intercooler. And we're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket and wrench to remove the driver side bolt, securing the intercooler to the bracket. While we're there, we're also gonna use that 12 millimeter wrench to just remove the bracket altogether. Set it aside, and again, I put the bolts back temporarily to easily keep track of them. Go ahead and move to the passenger side and remove that 12 millimeter bolt, securing the intercooler on that side. We're gonna move to the front of the car and with an eight millimeter socket extension and wrench or a long flathead screwdriver, loosen the hose clamp on the intercooler inlet, which is just under the intercooler right here, and then do the same with the outlet right above it. That's gonna get us ready to remove the intercooler. First, we're gonna wiggle it backwards to get it off of the outlet. And then we're gonna wiggle it to the right to get it off the inlet. This might take a minute or two. If it's especially difficult to remove, make sure those hose clamps are very loose, but it should come off without much trouble. Make sure to always handle it by the frame because the fins are very fragile and can bend easily. Next, we'll go to the passenger side and with a small flat head, we're gonna unclip that crankcase sensor from the vent hose. Simply insert the screwdriver in the gap and then carefully pry it back like you see me doing right here. What we just did was unplug this connector right here off of that hose. And that's the hose we're about to remove. It's a very short run, but it's behind all this mess of cables and hoses right here. And if you follow it underneath, it goes to that front barb right down there. And you'll see it clearly in a sec. So we should be able to pull the hose directly up to remove it from there. But since it's at an angle, I want to untangle it first. So we're gonna maneuver the hose out from that mess of cables. This might take a minute and it will definitely be easier if you have small hands. The goal is to get the hose out so that we can pull it straight up. It might be stubborn, but just pull it. Be careful so that it doesn't whack you when it finally gives. Once it's out, you'll expose the valve cover breather line on the passenger side. You can see it right there on the front. The driver side hose is much easier. So just move it up from under the other hoses and again, pull on it straight up until it comes out. Label the hose along with the other one and then put it aside for now. Right down there, you can see the port the hose came from. On both sides, it's gonna be the forwardmost breather port. Now it's time to remove the throttle body. Start by using an eight millimeter socket and ratchet to loosen the hose clamp on the coupler. Then slowly wiggle the coupler until it comes out of the opening. Then we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket extension and wrench to take off the four bolts holding the throttle body in place and put the four bolts somewhere safe. Once that's done, separate the throttle body from the intake manifold. Be careful with the gasket right here now and throughout this install because it will be reused and we don't want to have to order a new one. 
Okay, so with the throttle body out of the way, we have access to a PCV vacuum line right beneath it. The hose is held in place by a pinch clamp, so use pliers to move the clamp back and off of the barb. Then we're going to grab a flathead screwdriver to help the hose off. Be very careful here, just use the sides of the screwdriver while alternating sides like you see me doing. Once that's out, we can remove the PCV valve assembly you see right here next to the throttle body. First disconnect the sensor like we did the others. If it's especially difficult to do by hand, just use a screwdriver to push in the tab. After it's unplugged, pull up on the hose until it comes out just like the others and take it to a workbench for the next step. Right here you can see the sensor that we just unplugged. This right here is the vacuum line we disconnected from below the throttle body. And this right here is the drain hose that we just pulled up on. The kit does come with a replacement drain hose that you can use if your original one is in bad shape. My drain hose is in perfect condition, so I'm going to reuse it. But if you have an older car, it does have a replacement drain hose in case you need it. So depending on your own car, this drain hose right here may have been left behind in the car. If it's still in the car, you're going to grab this Y splitter and you're going to install it onto the drain hose left behind in the car. Just check to see that you didn't partially remove the drain hose when you were pulling on it. And if you did, push it back where it belongs. Since mine came off with a PCV assembly, we're going to remove it from the assembly. It should be on there pretty solid, but it will come off. And then as you can imagine, we're going to take that Y splitter and put it in its place. It's actually quite tough to get in there. And if you need to, just use engine oil to lubricate the splitter so that it slides in easier. Putting this drain hose back can be a bit challenging. To make it easier, I had to flip the hose so that the adjustable band was on top and then I lubricated the inside of the hose with oil. Simply work the hose over the barb and push it down all the way and flush against the block. Make sure that the hose goes all the way down because it's not easy to get to after everything is put back together. And then once you're done, angle the splitter somewhat close to what you see right here. The next few steps are for 2017 plus STIs. It's time to grab those hard breather lines and grab a small screwdriver and we're going to get the electrical connector off. You can see right here that there's a little clip and all you have to do is pop that clip up and then pull the band from the other side. That will allow us to remove the zip tie without breaking it since we're going to reuse it. Then we're going to use that same screwdriver to fully remove the connector from the breather lines. After that, grab the driver side hose removed earlier and inside the sensor you will notice a jumper. Grab a pair of needle nose pliers and grab that jumper and pull it free from the sensor. It should come right out. Then we're going to grab that jumper and connect it to the electrical connector that we just removed from the breather line. Now there's room in the connector to do this wrong. So make certain that the jumper is actually in the holes where it should be and not right next to them essentially doing nothing. Now we're going to grab some high quality electrical tape and we're going to cover the connector to protect it. This is only going to be as good as the quality of the tape that you use. So again, make sure you use high quality tape. Back in the engine bay, we're going to find this driver side hose right here and that's where it goes. We're going to make use of that stock zip tie. So just secure the dummy sensor to that hose right there and then find that electrical connector we unplugged earlier and go ahead and plug it into the sensor. Since we don't want this thing loose in here, grab a zip tie from the kit and fully secure the dongle to the hose just like you see me doing. Back at the table, we're going to grab those hard breather lines and again, with needle nose pliers, we're going to pull that jumper out of the passenger side ventilation sensor you see right here. Grab that jumper we just removed and needle nose pliers and grab the sensor's electrical connector that we unplugged earlier and put the jumper in there like we just did. Again, make sure the jumper is actually where it should be and be very careful you don't drop this jumper here because it would be a challenge to find it. As you can probably guess, we're going to also protect the dummy connector with electrical tape and just like we did the driver's side, we're going to grab a zip tie and secure it to the cable harness right here. Find your PCV assembly and as you can see, it should have this white ventilation sensor still attached. So go ahead and pull that sensor completely off of the hose it shouldn't be super easy to come out, so work it until it comes loose. Once out, grab the sensor and it's going to go right back where it was removed from to begin with right here. Just give it a wiggle to ensure that it's fully seated. Okay, now it's time to make room for the air oil separator in the engine bay. So before I show you the next few steps, I want to give you a quick explanation as to what we're going to be doing. This right here is your engine's main wiring harness. So it's very important that we're careful around it and we don't damage it. 
we're going to be moving this harness forward but as you can see right here the cable is folded onto itself and there is no slack so we're going to be carefully cutting this tape right here so we can get that slack back we're also going to be cutting this tape right up here on this o2 sensor and we're going to unclip and move this wiring harness out of this spot to make the room that we need for the air oil separator so grab a small razor and cut this tape right here securing this o2 connector in place be careful and make sure you're only cutting the tape we'll get back to it in a sec with that same razor we're going to cut a slit on that folded wiring bundle here i can't stress enough the need to be extremely careful here and ensure that you're not touching any wires with a razor right in the middle as you can see right here there's a narrow empty gap and that's where you should be cutting when you're done take the tape completely off and toss it right here behind the harness you can find where it attaches to the bracket so grab a flathead screwdriver and pull that little tab like you see me doing and then that's going to allow you to pull the harness out of the bracket you'll notice that the bracket is still attached to the strut tower so we're going to go ahead and remove that bracket for this step you'll need a 10 millimeter socket and a ratcheting wrench when you get it out be sure to label it and put it in your stock parts bin the main wiring harness is also attached to the bracket right here I've already removed it since there's really not much room to show you but you can see right here all we have to do is pinch the ends of this clip in and pull up on the harness. Just about any kind of pliers will be fine for this step and here's a better look so that you see exactly what you need to do. And finally before we hit the workbench you can see right here there's a lot of brake lines right where the air oil separator is going to go. So to make the proper room and prevent damage to those lines we're going to bend them back a little bit these lines are rigid and we don't need a lot of room the ones against the strut tower might not give way too much and the instructions call to have them bent up more than what you see here but i found that unnecessary for the three against the firewall just grab all three at once and carefully push them back against the firewall like you see me doing this should be about all the room that you need okay back at the workbench it's time to start assembling the air oil separator we're gonna grab the two coolant hoses and thread them by hand you can't miss them as they're pre-assembled and identical so just grab one and put it in the upper opening and then the other one right below it and we're gonna need an open-ended 7 8 wrench to tighten them i didn't have that particular size handy so in a pinch i used this adjustable wrench i never recommend using adjustable wrenches in place of the actual size tool but in a pinch it will do the job although there is not a lot of room to work with so i highly recommend having the proper 7 8 wrench available before you start no torque specification is given so use your best judgment and be sure not to over torque them while we're here we're also going to grab the 26 inch drain hose it's a half inch internal diameter hose and you can identify the hose because again it's 26 inches and it says half inch right on the hose take the hose and push it onto the drain port down here you're going to push it all the way back until there's no gap left then we'll grab one of the included zip ties to secure it in place when you place the zip tie make certain that the zip tie is within the barb right in the middle now I understand most people won't have one of these at home. This is an adjustable zip tie fastening and cutting tool and it's a good tool to have if you do a lot of car mods yourself. I'll link to it in the video description. If you don't have it you can tighten the zip ties by hand or with pliers. Now knowing that this drain hose will ultimately run this way towards the front of the car I'm going to rotate it so that the natural bend of the hose faces forward. Next we'll install the bracket and we're going to place it exactly how you see right here and with the bottom screw on the third hole from the bottom. First start all of the screws by hand and then fully tighten them with an allen wrench. And while we're here we might as well install the included PCV hose and it's this hose right here. It's easy to tell which hose it is because it's the only one with a PCV valve right in the middle. It should come pre-assembled so we're going to thread it by hand first and once you start feeling some resistance grab an 11 16 wrench and finish it off. This is a plastic fitting so it will probably not thread all the way in so do not attempt to force it and end up over torquing it. And the time has come. Grab the two 10 millimeter bolts that came with the kit and then grab the octopus and angle it like this. We're going to take this lower coolant hose right here and we're going to route it underneath the engine harness and carefully lower the air oil separator. You might have to move the harness forward and that's okay because it has to anyways and it might give you a bit of resistance. Right there the air oil separator is exactly where it needs to be so I'm going to go ahead and grab the top bolt and thread it by hand. Once the top bolt is in grab the lower bolt and do the same. To prevent cross threading and fitment issues 
always thread by hand first. This is a good time to make sure your brake lines are not rubbing against the canister here. Once you're satisfied, use that 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench to fully tighten the bolts and secure the AOS in place. When you're done, keep your wrench handy because we're gonna need it for the next step. Our air oil separator is installed in the location where it's gonna go, and now we're gonna tackle relocating the wiring harness before getting to those hoses. For this step, find the relocation bracket in the kit, and we're gonna insert it in the harness square in first, like you see me doing. The round hole is where the screw will go. Push it in the opening while slightly pulling the tab out. I overdid it here, so I'm pulling it back up a little bit. You want it to click. Now we're good to go there, so grab that 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench that we just used and remove that bolt right there holding the power steering line in place. When you get the screw out, set it aside for a moment, and as you can probably guess, we're gonna grab the harness with the relocation bracket already installed and flip it onto that power steering line bracket. As we've done many times by now, we're gonna start that bolt by hand before fully securing it, make sure there are no fitment issues and adjust as necessary. Then grab a 10 millimeter socket extension and ratchet and fully tighten that bolt. Finish this step by bending the bracket downward as you see me doing right here. And with that, we're ready to connect all of these hoses. We're gonna start with this lower coolant hose and we're gonna route it where it needs to go. It needs to ultimately go right here. And if you remember, we put that hose under the engine harness right here. So just grab it and we just have to tuck it in through here, making sure that there are absolutely no kinks on this or any other hose down there. And this, as you can see, it's gonna end up right there and we're gonna trim it. So again, it's gonna route from underneath the AOS, under and this way, through that hole right here underneath the sensor and right there. We'll leave it there for a sec. So for this next step, I wanna show you what we're gonna do. If you have hose pinch pliers, what we wanna do is pinch that hose you see right down there. And that's gonna minimize coolant loss on top when we disconnect this line right here. We're gonna do the hose swap very quickly to minimize coolant loss, but pinching that hose is a good fail safe. I didn't have the pinch pliers handy, so I improvised with some vice grips, which you can do as well, but I'll link in the video description to the proper pliers to use. If you use something like this, be sure to protect the hose by wrapping the teeth of the pliers with tape or something else. That's what you see me doing right here, pinching that hose I just showed you. Now we have that lower coolant hose routed and we have this one right here ready to take this one's place. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these hoses to size. For the top coolant line, we're simply gonna bend it a little bit since it's going up here and about that is all we want. You can't do too much hose because it'll end up falling on top of the intercooler. So mark the hose after you measure it and use hose cutters to cut the hose at that spot. We're gonna slide the pinch clamp off the barb of this top coolant expansion tank hose and then we'll take the included pinch clamp and put it over the top coolant hose as you see right here. Then we're gonna slide that hose off. Remember that it's gonna have some coolant in it, but it should only be a few drops if you pinch that lower hose properly. Proceed by pushing the hose all the way into the barb. So I wanna show you something that I could have easily edited out of the video, and that's that I cut this hose about an inch or so too short. Now I have a slight kink right here, and it's not much, but it's enough to make me uncomfortable because over time this might bend a little bit like this, and it might actually impede fluid flow. So I messed up and I wanted to show you because mistakes happen during installs and you have to figure out solutions. Thankfully, there's a union fitting that was included in the kit. So I'm gonna cut the hose right here and put the union fitting there. This is strictly because I messed up. So if you measure properly and take your time, you won't have to deal with this. I'm doing this just temporarily because I simply ordered a new hose. So I'll replace this hose completely when I get the new one in and cut it to size properly. When we're done with the fitting, we'll slide that pinch clamp over the barb and I'm using two zip ties to properly secure the fitting in place. For the lower coolant hose, we're gonna double check the hose for kinks and cut it right about here. Then we're gonna take the other included pinch clamp and slide it over the hose. And with those same pliers, we're gonna slide that pinch clamp on the turbo line off. Now we're ready to take the hose off and replace it. Simply slide it off the barb carefully. Remember it's full of coolant, so it will leak when the hose comes off. With the hose off, we can slide the AOS line in and then simply move the pinch clamp over the barb to secure it. Make sure the hose is sitting all the way back against this lip and the clamp is fully over the barb like this. If you pinch that lower coolant line, make sure that you remove those hose pliers at this point. Here we have the PCV line we installed earlier. 
This line will ultimately rest on top of the AC line under the intercooler. Here's a better view. It goes between the AC lines right here, underneath this hose right here, and onto the barb on the intake manifold that we exposed earlier. We're gonna push it all the way in. Again, be careful with this gasket because it's getting reused, and if you bend it, you'll have to order a new one. Just get your hand in there as best as you can and push the hose all the way flush. Then grab an included zip tie and secure it onto the hose like we did the others. With that done, we can start putting stuff back as we get close to finishing. We're going to put the throttle body back, make sure the gasket is still good, that the throttle body is clean and nothing inadvertently fell inside. Start with the two top ones like you see right here, and you guessed it, thread them by hand first. Once the two top ones are holding, put the two bottom ones in and thread them by hand. And finally tighten all four bolts to six foot pounds of torque, which by the way, it's not a lot, so it's easy to over torque these. Have a torque wrench handy to help you out if you need to. Now it's time to finish installing the drain line. This is the line that does all of the magic and dumps the oil back and the whole reason you got this device right here. The line will go through this hole right here and then install onto the half inch side of the Y fitting we installed earlier. We want to leave some slack on this hose so I'm only trimming a little bit so that it fits better and then we're putting the hose through this hole right here next to this Y fitting. So here's the hose right there and it's going to go in this fitting right here. Simply push the hose right onto the barb and if it's very difficult, lubricate the hose with oil. Here's what it looks like when it's done because I put the camera down to use both of my hands to properly push it in. We're also going to secure that hose with zip ties and trim the excess. Back on the bench, we're going to find the 5H breather hose, which is the thicker one stamped with 5H right on it. Measure exactly three inches off the end of the hose and use the hose cutters to cut it. Then grab the included 90 degree fitting and put the three inch section you just cut on one end and put the remainder of the hose on the other end. Then grab two zip ties and secure the hose ends properly like you see me doing. Back at the engine bay, we're gonna loosely attach a zip tie to the three inch section of the hose right here. To make this next step easy, we're gonna lubricate the inside of the hose with oil, and then we're gonna slide the long end of the hose under this bracket right here. As you can probably guess, we'll slide it into the other end of the Y fitting on the drain port. Double check to be certain the hose is completely over the barb and that the zip tie is in the middle as well. And then use needle nose pliers to fully tighten the zip tie and cut off the excess. The other end of the hose is going to connect to the bottom port right there. So I'm going to trim off the excess hose right about here, remeasure and adjust as necessary. What you see right here is about what you want. When happy, seat the hose all the way into that lower port and fully secure it with an included zip tie. Next we'll grab the 74 inch breather hose from the kit and get a zip tie pre-stage on one end. We'll install this on the driver's side breather port, so start by routing it under these hoses right here. After messing with this, it became clear that this would be much easier with the battery removed. So we're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench to remove the battery and get the room that we need. With the battery removed, we can maneuver the hose onto that exposed port on the driver's side. Simply push it in fully over the barb, double check your work, then fully tighten the zip tie and trim off the excess. The rest of the hose will run along the firewall like this and onto the center port on the AOS. We're going to measure and trim the hose to size and then install it onto the port, fully securing it there with a zip tie. If you want, you can move the hose under this bracket here. Either way is fine. Just secure it there with a zip tie so that the hose is not loose. For the other side, we're going to grab the remainder of the hose we just cut and we're going to pre-stage a zip tie like we just did to get it ready. As you can imagine, we're going to go right into that breather port down there. So we're going to grab the end of the hose and rod it through here between the harness and the bracket. Move stuff around if you need to, to make the room you need. Then we're going to maneuver the hose right onto the barb. There might have been an easier way of doing this, but I'm committed at this point. With the hose in, all I did was use small needle nose pliers to tighten the zip tie. I don't have huge hands, so I was able to just get the pliers in there and twist the zip tie to tighten it. If you have an issue with this and you need more room, you can always remove the air box here and that'll give you all the room you need. With that done, grab the other end of the hose and route it underneath the turbo bracket right there next to the other one. Before you cut to length, make sure there is enough room for the intercooler and that the hose is not pinched or in the way of anything else. Once you're satisfied, measure the end of the hose against the top port on the AOS and cut it to size. Place the hose all the way into the AOS and secure it with a zip tie. And with that, we are almost done. Grab those hard breather lines for the last time and remove the sensor from the passenger side hose like you see me doing right here. 
then we're gonna grab that sensor and plug it back into the passenger side connector right there. Grab the remaining half inch hose and a tape measure and measure and cut two two inch sections off the end. Then go to the kit and find the two half inch 90 degree fittings. As I've done on this one right here, we're gonna put one two inch section on one of the 90 degree fittings and one on the other one. And of course, secure them both with a zip tie. So we're gonna put one of these to the side momentarily. Then we're gonna grab the rest of the hose and connect it to one of the 90 degree fittings. This hose is rotting left, so use the natural bend of the hose that way and then grab a zip tie to fully secure the hose on the barb. Take that hose and install it onto the sensor we just put back in the car, just like you see right here. And again, secure with an included zip tie. Then being mindful that it's going into the top center port, we're gonna cut it to size. Finish this hose off with a zip tie. And this is it, the final hose. Grab the second 90 degree fitting and grab the rest of the hose we just cut off and we're gonna put it on the other side of that fitting. Push it in all the way, zip tie and trim off the excess. If you remember the sensor we put back earlier, that's where this hose is going. Push it in all the way and fully secure the hose with a zip tie. The other end of the hose will of course connect to the final port on the AOS. Secure it with a zip tie just like the others this final hose, you may be thinking that it's too short, and you are correct, but we're gonna finish this install since we're almost done, and then I'll tell you why and what I did about it so that it doesn't happen to you. Very quickly, this cable right here might end up kind of loose like you see right here, and you're free to move it around as you need to and secure it with a zip tie. Grab the coupler and we're gonna put it back on the throttle body. Work it in and secure it with a wrench. It's very easy to get carried away when torquing these, so if you need to, use a torque wrench and tighten to 2.2 foot-pounds of torque. We're about ready to put the intercooler back, but there's a little issue you may come across. So this right here is where the intercooler goes in first. So if this hose is sitting right against that, you're gonna have a very tough time getting the intercooler in there. I say that because I just tried and that's why I'm telling you this. If you have this issue, simply push the hose through like this to give you enough clearance around that intake there. As you see now, the intercooler can slide in without being impeded. That said, grab the intercooler and proceed to install it. This time, we will work it into the inlet below first by wiggling it sideways. This might take some patience, but be sure the intercooler is clear of obstructions before it goes in. When that inlet hose is mostly in, you can start working the outlet right above it to fully seat the intercooler in place and then fully secure it by tightening the two hose clamps. Their proper torque is only 2.2 foot-pounds. Reinstall the bypass valve with the two bolts removed earlier and be sure to fully tighten them to 11.8 foot-pounds of torque. With the intercooler in, let's not forget the bracket that secures it in place. Start all three bolts by hand first and then proceed to fully tighten them to 11.8 foot-pounds of torque. We're gonna grab the passenger side bolt just like the driver's side and we're gonna torque it to 11.8 foot-pounds of torque as well. So I wanna show you what I meant by this hose being too short. If I would have left it, the hose would have sat over the intercooler and of course we don't want that. I took too many liberties throughout the installation and cutting the hoses. I wish that hose would have been just a bit longer and I didn't realize that last hose was going to be basically what remained from all of the cuts that I did. So thankfully for you, all you have to do is take your time, measure twice and cut once and you should not have an issue at all with this. The air oil separator is now fully installed and working like a charm. I will very closely monitor the performance and share any issues that I see in future videos if needed. But for now, I'm pretty happy and ready to get more installations completed. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If this was useful to you, I'd appreciate a like. Let me know what you think about this. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing for more content just like this. Make sure you check out that other video with the theory of operation on the air oil separator. And until the next video, take care.